What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. I'm Nate, Brian Bates, Aaron Weber. Thank you to Viore for sponsoring this episode of the Nate Land Podcast. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash Nate. Not, lo- not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75. More on that later. Uh, welcome, folks. Hello, folks. <laughs> I said that almost accidentally. <laughs> like I, I, I forget. Uh-huh. If I have something to do, I kind of forget. <laughs> uh, we are pre-recording this episode because uh, I will be uh, in California at the One Night Only Tour. Already just happened, so hope you were there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just so you know that we are pre-recording it We actually still have some comments, though uh, Breakfast went through <laughs> And just grabbed, you know, some ones that didn't They weren't timely Yeah Just critical Timeless ones Picked a big one Opened the gate with a big one <laughs> Dr. Uh, one comment, too I got someone that said I wore my watch backwards Because of this, this, the dial is on this side that uh, that was uh, that was like one of those like Facebook things that you see. It's so you don't hit the Siri button when you bend your wrist, and I was hitting it a lot. So you you wear the, you put the dial back oh. here, and it never oh. touches it. And then you can just change the screen. Now your sleeve's going to touch it. Uh, it's not enough of a problem, but I mean hitting it, especially when I golf, if I wore this. But any other time, it just always hits Siri. Siri, it's Siri just pops up, man, all the time. Yeah, you know what I started doing? You know, with the new iOS, you can program tapping the back of the phone. Yeah, to be Siri, you can do it to anything. But yeah, I set it to yeah. Siri for a while. I I tap the back of the phone accidentally a lot. <laughs> you talk to Siri quite a bit. No, I, well, I, I didn't mean to. I yeah. would just tap it, and then by accident, then Siri would pop up. I don't. I, know. I feel like with Siri, you either don't do it, or that's all you do. Like, that's how someone talks to it. They either, I don't ever ask Siri anything. I don't either. But anybody else that does, my wife talks to Siri quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, our voice texting, I get uh, audio to text. Yeah. I get that a bit. And who does that? David Spade. A lot of audio text. The <laughs> first time I got one from him, I was like, oh, I guess I'm listening to this text. <laughs> uh, I don't mind it. It's not as bad as you think. Yeah. It's like just getting, saying it and it's, you know, it's, it doesn't take as much time and you just do it. I actually don't mind it as much as I thought I would. But at first I was like, what are we doing? What are we doing here? We've gotten uh, comments that way. And they're like, this is too long to type out. So I'm just going to tell you. And then I have to just play clip after clip yeah, after yeah, clip. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just like the worst story ever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and they know who they are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Sefdar Khan, Dr. Sefdar Khan, S-A-F-D-A-R, Sefdar, 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 Dr. Khan, Dr. (laughs) Khan, Dr. 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 Fantastic podcast. I love listening to you, Banjo and Aaron at the beginning of every (laughs) operation day before I perform complex spinal surgery. (laughs) Dude, we are, (laughs) I mean, he is... Would Oof. you be? What are you listening to? Nate Land podcast. <laughs> What's that? Are you the main guy, or is there other guy? That's what they then they ask him. Or you're just the guy that's in here now? And there's another guy. He's like, no, no, I'm the main. I'm oh the yeah, main when's one. the real doctor coming out? Oh, <laughs> oh that's, that's me, great. Doctor wow. Khan. I'm Doctor Seftar Khan. <laughs> Hello, folks. Hello, <laughs> folks. He yells it into your open back. Hello, folks. <laughs> I perform complex spinal surgery. It makes me laugh and puts me into a relaxed frame of mind before I start the day operating on sick patients. Once during an especially complicated surgery, when the room was very tense and we were under extreme stress, I just yelled, Penguin! (laughs) To everyone's surprise. I proceeded to tell the OR team the story and had them play the clip on the OR monitors, and within minutes, everyone began chuckling. The room became noticeably less tense, and I'm grateful to report that patient did very, very well. Thanks again for the unbelievable work you guys are doing. Anytime you come up to Columbus in the future, I'd love to host you in the shoe on the field for an OSU Big Ten football game. Wow. I tell you what, a guy that's doing that kind of surgery, he's got tickets on the field. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that's a guy you want in your life, you know. What if we? he said, sadly, the patient did not make 
but we were <laughs> yeah. so much more relaxed. I was hoping to introduce you guys to the patient, but obviously, <laughs> yeah, with the chaos that was going on, we were <laughs> we got real sloppy yeah. after that, <laughs> and uh, it. <laughs> it was a real problem. Penguin, uh, <clears throat> that's unbelievable. You know, we just did the episode you just watched about uh, clutch performances. That's yeah. a clutch performance right there. Yep, doing something like that, man. The amount Ooh. of pressure that takes God. to just be, you know, you got to do hours and hours of it. You want to be someone's first guy? You think they ever say that <laughs> right before you go under? They go, hey, you're my first time. You're my first surgery. Yeah. <laughs> they just whisper it to yeah. you. <laughs> right? The last thing you hear, what was the last thing you heard? Hey, I've never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I told, I signed an autograph once and I told the person, I go, this is the first autograph I've ever signed. Yeah. And, uh. So I'd imagine that he does that too. <laughs> this is the first. <laughs> he's like, man, I'm freaking out, man. <laughs> and he's like, what is that? And then you're just gone. No, oh, that's awesome. Though. Sore Sogorb. S-O-R-E-S-O-G-O-R-B. Sogorb. Sore Sogorb. Sogor- is that the real name? Uh, <laughs> Sore Sogorb. You think that is his real name? This poor guy. Sore? Yeah. Sore Sigour. <laughs> I hope it's his name. Oh, man. Sore. Get in here. You have to say the last name or you just you go Sore? And he goes here. Every teacher Yeah, I don't think you need to be any here. more specific. Sore. Uh, he just sits there and the teacher's like, uh, Which one? Sigorb. Oh. I thought it was the other Sore. I play your podcast while working, illustrating on my computer. Sometimes I spend large amounts of time without saving my progress because I forget to do so. And then my computer crashes and I lose all my work. Now I click save every time I hear Nate say unbelievable or every time he roasts bland bread. (laughs) I haven't lost a single piece of work ever since. (laughs) That's got to be frustrating to, I mean, everybody knows not saving something. Golly. All the time. I've, when I've written out shows like, which are in my hat. Nate Bargetti show from the Feld. <laughs> we send a bunch of these hats to Nigeria. Uh, isn't that where they send the hats? Yeah, things yeah, that yeah. don't go good. Um, President McCain mean, hats yeah. too. Yeah. Atlanta Falcons Super Bowl. <laughs> like when they had, and then they lost to the Patriots. Uh, they, uh, but yeah, you type something out. You, I mean, it's a whole. You're just in the groove of like doing it, and then it just goes away, yeah. and you're like, oh. and then the next time is never as good. You're like, that's the gist of it. Right. And you're like, it's not that good. Yeah, well, I, I lost it. Miriam Gregory. I've been a fan of the podcast since day one. Is that, you think that's These right? These names all feel made up. Yeah. <laughs> What's cool? Miriam yeah. Gregory. Source. Of it course. feels like almost we were short on comments. <laughs> and then. So Brian went in. And Boat Ramp went in and, <laughs> and then just said, just took. Source. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Miriam <laughs> Gregory. Oh, it's the worst name I've ever heard. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a real Sore. name. A, Sore. Sore. I don't think he's gonna turn around by the way we yeah. did it. But... Sore's different. <laughs> Maybe Sore. This next next one's uh soda. <laughs> uh seven. <laughs> Which is these are all just Sore. George Costanza names <laughs> that he came up with. Sore. <laughs> Sore oh, it's beautiful. It is, yeah. Sore. I got a good idea what that guy looks like. Uh, I feel like you can, you can picture a, a sore. You can picture him in your head. Oh, You're like, yeah. I, Come on, I feel like I've never. I don't know what. I don't know what they look like, but I think I could pick them. Oh right. If yeah. you walk, if you said there's there's a hundred people standing in the crowd, one of them's named Sore. I'd be like, I feel pretty good. I could figure out who he is. If you lined up Doctor Khan, Sore Sigor, and Miriam Gregory, I could tell you which one was Sore. I'll tell you yeah. that much. Would you <laughs> is sore male or female? Sore feels like it's sore. Gender, it's gender well, if neutral, it's, if man. It's so if it's so Ray, yeah, I'm so Ray would be so a lovely lady. Uh, huh? What? <laughs> you know, you don't think so Ray's a? <laughs> these are all. I don't know. <laughs> these names are. <laughs> these are our fans, Aaron. That you're laughing at. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the sorest name ever. <laughs> so, well, if it's not if it's Soray Sigour. Soray Sigour. Soray Sigour. Like a Ukrainian ballet dancer or well, something. Well, that they could be big. Oh, right. Soray Sigour doesn't sound as bad. 
Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That sounds yeah. like a ballet Sore dancer Sigourb from the is, Eastern is, Europe. Yeah. Sore. Sore Sigorb. Okay. That actually Sorry. is a beautiful name now. And I want to name my next daughter that. I don't, <laughs> we're not having another daughter. But Sore find, Bargetzi? Yeah, Sore Bargetzi. I feel like if I find some little girl sitting out now on the side of the road and I, she lives with us, I feel like that's how you get a Sore in your family. <laughs> You don't. They're not born into that family. You <laughs> find them, and they, and they're, and they're, they're put with that family. Uh, <laughs> Miriam Gregory, have we read this one? No. no, no, we started. I've been a fan of the podcast since day Oof. one. I just want to say thank you for everything you taught me. Since hearing all of your bombing stories and insults, I've been a lot better at taking myself less seriously. I recently had the chance to sing on TV for the first time. And I've never been more confident. I felt like it would be okay to look stupid and it would be a good story to tell after. But it went great. So thank you. Congratulations, Nate, Aaron, and Worried Whistle. I love you all. Hmm. We need to hear her. Let's, we need to see, get a clip of that. Yeah. Yeah. See it on TV? I'd love to see that. Uh, what is she saying? On? For TV? Oh, I don't know. It's crazy. Uh, Jonathan Red. This is a normal one. Is that more up your alley? <laughs> no, yeah. You can't handle the taste of the fans we have around the world. You need an Alabama, Jonathan Red, Johnny Red. <laughs> Johnny Red. Does that make you feel better, Aaron? You feel like home? You and Johnny Red no. went <laughs> boat fishing. It does sound like we try to fix the problem. By yeah. just kidding. <laughs> That's Brian. It's like these names are getting a little too. They might crazy. catch on to me they after the yeah, Miriam Gregor. John Red. This oh. podcast seems like the elaborate plan of two best friends to get their other friend to eat an excessive amount of donuts. And when they finally do, <laughs> they will end the podcast. They have been talking about it since episode one or two. And I'm sure they thought Aaron would have done it by now. I love the show. It's the best part of my week. Goodbye, folks. Uh, Johnny Red. I've done it, just not on the show. <laughs> Johnny Red. He does it regularly. <laughs> we can't get him on. It's like Bigfoot. Can't really catch him on tape. There's a lot of like fuzzy... Images. We put up trail cams. We put That's trail cams right. as he goes and eats it in yeah. the woods. Yeah. Shame. We can't figure out why, but the trail cams can never yeah. get him. We don't know why, but it can never can. He got, all we know is two boxes go in and no boxes come out. We think he's littering as well. Uh, yeah, we're going. We're going to do it. That's going to be a special one. We got it. We just we we got to find the right time, right, to do it. I don't think, like I said, I don't think we can eat on air. I, th- I, don't, I don't think that's... that's I don't know if there's ever going to be a right time for me personally. I think we film it, but, and then right. we filmed it, and then we put it out as a... Right, right. I don't think there's ever wrong time for you personally to do that. I had Krispy Kreme Thank this past week. <laughs> uh, I have it a lot. I'm starting to feel it now, though. I can feel like my blood's getting thicker. You ever feel that? It's like maple syrup. Yeah, like you just... like I, oh, said, yeah. I eat so bad, you're like, I feel like my blood's not moving as good as it should be. <laughs> And I and I don't think I should feel that. Yeah, no, I you think shouldn't. about it. I don't feel it that slowing day down. after though. It didn't stop me, but I remember going. I got to stop this. This is my arm feels weird. <laughs> uh, Grant Weldon, I teach fifth graders, and I have to switch gla- classes because the teacher rotates now instead of students rotating. Oh wow! So this teachers, students stay in the room, and the teachers move. Yeah, is that because of COVID? Mm-hmm. Uh. When I go into the class, I enter saying, hello, folks. And they say, hello, Mr. Weldon. It's so sweet, and they don't know why I do it, but I love it every time. That's cool. That's cool, man. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. That's so, so they're just switching, moving around, almost spreading COVID around, <laughs> trying to give it to all the kids. They go, <laughs> one teacher has it. We don't tell them which one, <laughs> and they see if they can guess. Mike Pugh. Hello, folks. When my wife and I married in 1978, there was a still law on the books in Michigan that the clerk had to ask, are you an idiot? Thinking we were Bargetsy level comedians, we both said, I'm not, but this one is, <laughs> while pointing our fingers at each other. Of course, the clerk <laughs> did not crack a smile. I can only assume she had heard that one She had heard that one before. Keep up the great work. Also, we love to see you guys live. We just bought our son and his wife a ticket to the L.A. drive-in show. Mike Pugh will be at the drive-in show. He was at the drive-in show. Oh, he was. Oh, yeah. he was at the drive-in because we're recording <laughs> yeah. this. Hope you enjoyed it. He goes, we left early. Uh, it's, uh, that is, I, I, are you an idiot? It's not a, I'm not against that. The crazy law in Michigan, where, I mean, an idiot is technically a mentally challenged person that maybe shouldn't be getting married. Yeah. And uh, I'm not against it. Yeah. I asked both of y'all before we did this podcast, are y'all idiots? 
and it's like, because I am, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't need more than me. Uh, that's not a, you know, not a, not a, just ask the person you're about to marry. Mm -hmm. Hey, just heads up real quick. Are you an idiot by any chance? And I, I don't know, think it's on the books anymore because I think people feel like mentally challenged people should be able to get married if they so now choose. It's, are you stupid? A <laughs> little more, you know, publicly acceptable. Yeah. Nick Herka. Hey, guys, speaking of what would you do moments, I have a Starbucks-related story, and I was wondering, what would you do in my place? I was in line at a Starbucks, and a lady in front of me was rifling, right? Yep. Yeah. Was rifling through her huge cluttered purse to get out of her wallet. As she pulled out her wallet, I also took mine out of my pocket, and when I did, about $3 and quarters also fell out of my pocket. The lady in front of me immediately went, oh, gosh, sorry, and started picking up all the change, thinking she had dropped it. She was so confidently picking it up and putting it in her purse that I didn't know what to do, so I just didn't say anything and let her keep it. Anyway, Ron reminded me of something you guys would talk about. Love the podcast. Thanks for all of it. Ooh, man. We need to get some better stuff to talk about. If he's like, this is <laughs> this these guys right are, up their yeah. alley. Dude. This is, I mean, he goes, this would be one of the top episodes. <laughs> uh, I do like talking about this stuff, though, and yeah. I would let her have it. I you would? would? Let her, yeah, oh, yeah. It would be the, it matter the situation. Have you seen this happen? You nodded like you seen this no movie. i'm just saying i would i mean it's was well, it three carries a lot of change uh <laughs> he's at the age where you have change on you quite I've a bit i've got some hard candy uh, in my pocket yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh i it, when she says oh gosh sorry and started picking up all the change i would if once she if she said something if she didn't say anything i would have just picked it up but if she said something like that i would have probably just been like just let her have it mm -hmm. if it gets too if too many people start paying attention i mean there's a big commotion so then people start looking I probably would have done what he did and just been like, it's a, you know, it's over. That's one of those things. It's easy to be like, oh, I would have said this, but in the moment, you just think this is not worth. Is it worth? It's right. how quick do you think? I will. I I a lot of times think about what would happen. Mm -hmm. Like if I say it's mine, and that she disagrees. Now, when an argument over change mm -hmm. on the yeah. floor, right? And so. Do I want to be in that argument? The only reason I feel like you should do it is to keep her from feeling awkward and scrambling to pick up all this. Right. Say, no, no, no. That you, was on me. Yeah. Well, you I help her. Uh, but she dropped the purse. Put her purse. Get out. She pulled the one. I took he, mine out. He dropped the coins. I, I would have done exactly what this guy did, which is. Just... Oh, he dropped. He goes, no, no, that's mine. Uh, yeah. $3 and quarters is a lot. 12. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody loves to have quarters. Yeah, quarters are, that's about the only change you want. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, one time I was driving down the road and there was a homeless guy on the side of the street, and I had all this change. And I, so he's going up asking for money and I go, I don't have any bills, but I got all this. Do you want all this change? And he's like, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I give him this big handful of change. And he goes, thanks. And then I watch him just walk away. He takes about 10 steps and he just throws all the change off. <laughs> Bad. Wow! Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, he that's pretty that. good. He didn't want that change. No. Well, how much do you think you gave him? Uh, probably three dollars worth <laughs> in quarters. But but not in quarters. <laughs> no, not he in, kept the quarters. Not in quarter. He would have kept the quarters it for was, sure. Yeah. You kept the quarters. That's right. Yeah. NRS Automotive. Is this a company? NRS Automotive. Since the podcast is a clean podcast, does it automatically rule out the possibility? of having some of your potty mouth comic friends as guests. For example, Big J. It does not rule it out. Uh, if Big J was here, I, 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 I don't necessarily want to do a Zoom, so that's why, you know, it's kind of got to be people here. But if J comes to town, you know, I mean, Jake could probably stay with us. And if he stayed with us, I'd have him on the podcast. I would tell him, you know, it's like, hey, we try to be clean. If he's not, I would just beep stuff out. Mm -hmm. uh, is honestly what I would do. But, I mean, Big J's done TV. Big J's, it's close, though. Big J would be tough. I mean, I know Big J's done some late night shows, and it's it's hard. But Big J's so funny. We're talking about random things, right? Uh, but that's something that's even harder to keep guys like that clean is when they talk, you know, mm. especially because the bonfire, which is a, him and Soder, so good, and they, but they're and they're just talking. So talking and like this is where it's hard to control. I always think if you're trying to stop cursing. Or if you if you say you're you say you a lot of people in regular life could curse too they feel they curse too much in just regular life. It's start weaning it out in some regular conversations. Just think I'm gonna go to this house and I'm not gonna curse. Mm -hmm. And that way you can learn to hold it back. And that's how you practice it. And so, you know, but yeah, I would have Jay on. 
obviously, I mean, we'd be happy, thrilled. Get Laura on, you know. Uh, get rid of, you know who. <laughs> <laughs> get me the, hello, welcome to Nate Land. This is Big J Oakerson, Laura Bargatz. <laughs> Uh, what did anyone notice if you didn't say that? Uh, would they? I don't know. Who's Jay? Who's Laura? <laughs> Both offensive. Uh, ben Kissam. Hi, guys. Question for an aspiring comic in Denver. I haven't done stand-up since March. I was about a year in at the time, started to find, starting to find my voice on stage. Cases are rising here again. I just heard from a public official. They don't really anticipate the city being open again until next June. If you were faced with this as a newer comic, how would you handle it? Would you pursue something else like a podcast or YouTube videos? Or should I just move to the South where coronavirus isn't real <laughs> in hopes of getting on stage sooner? Thanks for all that you guys do. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, a year in, I, I, here's what I will, honestly, the, the, my brutal opinion, you're not finding your voice. <laughs> uh that's just my honesty with being a year in. You could think you're finding some voice, but I promise you're not. You're, it's going to change. And then you're going to be in five years, be like, oh, that was insane. But I think it's good to think you find your voice. It's good to go through all this. Yeah, during this time, it's tough. Uh, you could start a podcast. You could do some YouTube stuff. There's other different ways you could try to be creative. That's definitely not a bad thing to go do. You can try to go to different places and move. Uh, you got a great scene in Denver, though. Honestly, I'd probably wait it out unless you wanted to move. I mean, just go down and try to stay somewhere if you want to go try to get up. But I, I mean, you got a great scene in Denver, man. Denver's a Denver's a, a, a hot spot to be for comedy. I don't think anybody's getting up, so I don't think you're missing anything. I mean, we're doing some, sh they're doing like some social distance shows at places, but you're you're competing also with so many people that have been doing it longer, and no one's getting on stage, so your competition is. You know, guys, that I've done it for 17 years. You will be trying to get on the same show I'm probably trying to get on. We're all trying to get on these shows. Uh, so I, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'd make a big move. I, I think it's not a bad to do. You know, I know guys are doing Zoom shows or make some videos, try to do some stuff creative, write stuff. It stinks, dude. This is just a terrible time. Uh, so I wouldn't do anything that's going to be hard to walk back. Also don't know if anywhere is reliably 100% going to stay open all the yeah. time. It's I mean, if you went to Atlanta, like that stuff's going to close. I mean, right. every, everything's popping up and closing. You want to move and then it's all going to close. It's yep. like week by week here, yeah. man. It Go could visit. change any minute. Go visit the city if you uh if you want to, but that that's the only thing. I, I wouldn't make any sudden sudden big moves because of that. But good luck to you and don't give up on it. Don't quit. This is this is one of the times that it's you're going to think you know, this would be a perfect excuse so you can tell everybody, I tried it. I just didn't hold out. Everybody's having to hold out, so you hold out and just keep writing, keep trying to come up with stuff. And then when you're ready, just hit the ground running and uh, never stop. John Hance. Hello, folks. I've been playing the YouTube version of the show in the background on our living room TV the past few weeks. My wife doesn't really pay much attention, but she catches the highlights because she loves Nate and hears me laughing all the time. After a couple of days, I thought it'd be funny to convince her that Brandon is actually Nate's dad. Oh I mean, I already love this. <laughs> she is the type that can fall for anything if I say it with a straight face. She's a regular Mick Movicki. I, mean, I added that in. Without missing the beach, she says, oh, yeah, I can totally see that. <laughs> they don't look much alike, but you can tell just you can just tell he's Nate's dad by the way he acts. I couldn't explain Aaron's relation, so he is difficult. He's officially just your neighbor who's quarantined and has nothing else to do but drop by and talk on the podcast. <laughs> I don't know how long I can keep this joke going, but I'm literally dying every time I start the show. And I would bet good money you guys could read this comment on the show and say my full name, and she still wouldn't catch on. Please give it a shot, and let's see how long I can make my wife think Braden is Nate's dad. <laughs> Love the show. Highlight my week. John Hance. <laughs> see if she heard that one. <laughs> Hello, folks. John Hance. <laughs> John Hance here. Uh, that sounds like a good sports reporter name. john hance john yeah. hance hello folks john hance here uh it's like phil name yep yeah, maybe that's why i think that because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's because it's like phil nance this is name is phil nance right uh yep no it's not phil nance what? jim nance. jim nance uh yeah. phil nance <laughs> that sounds like one of the <laughs> phil nance what's up with breakfast is whistling <laughs> oh that's a brutal one uh, uh so it's uh all right. 
Viore. Viore is a, an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they are offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash Nate. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to viore.com slash Nate and discover the versatility of Viore clothing. I am I am wearing it. Jeffrey's Pullover is the one I'm wearing. It's actually very, very comfortable. I'm working out. Obviously, you guys are seeing the progress, the progression of me being jacked. Uh, but I need some winter stuff to work out. But I got this one is just this is like a good sweater and wear it on stage. It's nice, very comfortable. You got yeah, I you got have this. that on. Yeah, it's it's very soft, very comfortable. I'm not I don't know if you guys know, I'm not great on the laptop, but it was very easy to order online. I didn't have any problem. Oh, you got it ordered quick. Yeah, it was super easy. I ordered on my phone, it was super fast. Yeah. And that's the that's the key. Yeah. Go get it. Something easy to order online. Right. That's awesome. And this fit, I got a large, and that's what I usually wear in uh, sweaters or stuff. Mine Shirt underneath is also Viore. Oh, it's pretty good. Oh, wow. Loaded got a good up. neck. We're Viore all over. Got a good neck. Yeah. Viore. At well, least I had a good neck. I like a good, I like a good tight no, neck. that's not what I said. I like said. a good tight neck. Viore.com <laughs> slash Nate. Also, we'd like to thank our new sponsor, BetterHelp. That's Better H-E-L-P. BetterHelp is the largest online counseling platform worldwide, professionals, licensed, and vetted counselors that you can trust. BetterHelp makes professional counseling available anytime, anywhere, through a computer, tablet, or smartphone. You get these therapists. Uh, if you need to talk to therapists, it's all online now anyway because of COVID. I don't think many are doing in person. If you go talk to a therapist, uh, I'm thinking I want to talk to a therapist. I think it's a good thing. You hear so much about it. I, I used to not like it, to be honest. I'm always mm-hmm. kind of, I can feel weary about it. But I do, I don't think it's a bad thing. And I think it's actually a good thing to, like, you know, you got to be able to talk about stuff. What if I want to complain about them too? Usually I do it to their face. But what, what if I want to do it behind <laughs> their back, you know, more privately? It's not self-help. It's, I mean, it's just professional counseling. You can send a message to your counselor at any time. You can start communicating in under 24 hours. So if you want to, if you're listening to this now and say you're depressed, stressed, you know, you got a bunch of anxiety because the world's falling apart, relationships, grief, sleeping. Uh, you can talk to someone from the moment you hear this to 24 hours. You can go sit there and talk to them. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available, which is a huge thing because I know that's uh, a big problem. It's just people worry about how expensive it is. Right. And if you feel like you need to talk to someone, I'm, I'm all for that. You know, we've had we've had comments where, you know, people have gone through stuff and people need to get some stuff out of your chest. You might feel alone. This is, you can do this, you can do this alone from your home. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash Nate. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Nate. All right, we're doing it. So this is the, we, that was a good, we got good comments. Yep. I know people probably talk about the last week's show, but. Uh, you know, I, I thought stuff. of another uh, clutch performance. Yeah. Paul O'Neill's two home runs for that little boy in the hospital. And, the, and the, it's not, <laughs> yeah. And then what about the next week? He had to catch one in his hat. Yeah. I mean. Uh, even more clutch. Even, I mean, how crazy is that? <laughs> yeah. Where do you get, I'm not even a home run hitter. <laughs> One's one thing. Where do you get two from? <laughs> Uh, it's a great one of my favorite Seinfeld moments. Yeah, is that so funny. Is Kramer sitting in there with that kid? Can I get that some orange juice? He goes after the first hit. He drinks this. He's, by the way, let it be known, Kramer's a stranger to this kid, <laughs> and this kid has let his. They let the. I mean, a stranger sitting there in alone uh-huh. at the hospital with their child as they watch the Yankee game, and the kid was in. He controlled the whole room. It's unbelievable. I love it when Kramer said. I need you to do something for me, though. And he's like, I know. Get out of this bed and walk someday. Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, but I really need that car. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that'd be great. But <laughs> weather is changing. Temperatures are changing. It's cold here today in Nashville. Last week was good. This week's cold. Uh, we have no front door. Uh, it's if you, I explained that last week. If you listen to it, wife 
our front door is gone. That is still very funny to me to think they knocked on the door. Just for someone to knock on your door and then ask for the door <laughs> is one of the wildest things I've ever been asked. Yeah. You know, anything else, anything they could have asked for anything. If you told me what you want me to take, I could have almost said anything. Just don't take the door, obviously, because we need the door. <laughs> yeah. And that's what they came for. Uh, so weather's changing, and we wanted to do an episode on weather. You guys want to see if we can, you know, can these guys talk about weather for <laughs> yeah. an hour and a half? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I think so. We talk about a lot of dumb stuff mm-hmm. right? for a long time. That's the point of all this. That's why we like coming up with these weird things, because it makes it, you know, you need stuff to go off of. Mm-hmm. You just need, we need. Well, and we've got a weatherman on the podcast. No. I mean, so that helps. You did it. I did it once in you college. Did it professionally. That's all it takes. That's more than no, that. You think you did was it professionally? Like, Miriam sang on in TV. <laughs> she said, I sang on TV. You, you posted know. that video of, of uh, yeah, of, of Bates doing, doing it in college, but yeah. I worked at a TV station. For yeah. Why did you do time. it? Were you filling in? No, it was a class we took. It was like a broadcasting class. We so all that had wasn't to... on TV? Uh, no, I don't even think that was on TV. Oh. That kind of takes the thunder out of it. <laughs> I've got some uh, clips of me doing the news in college that I could bring in. Yeah? Bring it in. Like, but I could show you. Yeah, I think the fans are dying for it. Uh, <laughs> I... <laughs> uh, watching George's home videos. <laughs> Yeah. Are you trying to change you? What are you like eight? <laughs> uh, you were were they were they on TV or they they were just they were yeah, on, on TV the college TV? Yeah, well, I mean, it, but it aired in Murfreesboro, like throughout. Yeah, so everybody saw it at home. Yeah, did your family see it? Uh, they didn't live in Murfreesboro, so they couldn't uh, see it. But I recorded it, and that's why I have it now on VHS. That's like tapes. your what was the TV thing that y'all you did? But y'all both do it. That was, uh, the Circle Network. The Circle Network. Circle, oh, it's so good. <laughs> where, Describe where we, how you. <laughs> So, were you on it too? Yeah. So he they hosted did, one of them. Hosted yeah, uh, a couple so episodes. So, uh, oh, all right, take it easy. Uh, he goes, yeah, I created it. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. sorry. Uh, so, they did some stand-up on a TV show. It was TV taping, did it at Zany's. Yeah. All real done taping, cameras. I mean, you know, how would I watch it? What would you tell people? <laughs> Go to channel 4.5. But you got to have... Uh, that's the butt. Yeah. That's a go to channel 4.5. You're like, that seems weird. Never heard of that being called a channel, but you gotta okay. have an antenna. Oh, <laughs> you gotta get your TV remote and switch the input settings to, uh, well, I guess it depends on how your settings are usually to TV antenna yeah. Yeah. and then turn to channel 4.5 and then look up when it airs. Right. That's all. Oh, that's, yeah, it's not too many hoops. So basically, that's locally though, 4.5. Yeah. Get your, so if you're in Nashville, yeah, and you want to watch them on the Circle Network, uh, get rid of your cable. <laughs> Here's the first thing I need you to do. Yeah. You got to have over Throw there. Throw your direct TV out in the yard. <laughs> Switch to TV. Right. You see, real scrambly. You're like, well, that's not good. Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> Go to, you know, we're four, you know, what channel four and channel five is? I need you to go right in the middle of that. <laughs> you gotta have an yeah. antenna though. Oh yeah, you gotta have an antenna. Ooh. Yeah. Well it wasn't it didn't air in Nashville for a while. Yeah, so at first I, <laughs> I made my television debut, didn't know about it, couldn't watch it in the city that it's based yeah. in. For a grand old Opry channel. That's what the network is. Oh, yeah. so it's like so there's people that just know how to get to this channel. There's like an audience that watches this channel because it's the Grand Ole Opry channel. But it's just right. very funny. It wasn't on in Nashville yeah. originally. It was just yeah. an awkward kind of rollout of yeah. because it's a brand new station. Yeah. yeah. So it was weird. Now it's, if you go most places around the Southeast and even some of the Midwest, it's on. You'll see it on the cable listing. Yeah. But yeah. at the time, it was like, I couldn't tell. I made my TV debut. I couldn't watch. Couldn't Has anybody, watch it anybody text you that like saw it like randomly? Uh, one person told me, but no, I didn't, yeah. I didn't give any text. I had one, uh, a thing in Boston on the Nesson, New England Sports Network, and they did a comedy show. We just did jokes about, uh, like, sports. It was shot in Boston. Uh, kid and play. What's Maybe kid? or <laughs> I don't know. Jason? There was play. Huh? Jason Who's kid? the comic? No, kid, you know. Is it kid and play? No. Kid uh, Cuddy. No, uh. 
from the movie in the 80s. Yeah, Kid and Play. Kid and Play. And one's a comedian. I didn't know that. Yeah. I think the... The one with the big high top? Yeah, the lighter skin one. How are you allowed <laughs> to say that? I don't know. But you know, the black men county. Uh, <laughs> it's the, yeah. So I don't, yeah, who's, is he, that's kid. <laughs> anyway, so he wasn't even there. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he's a comedian. And he went on, I had to, I had to follow him. And uh, he, had a, he had a rough go at it. Let me tell you that. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's much of a comedian. Yeah. And so he was pretty bad. <laughs> like he was just like jumping around. Like it was, it was like they told him like do stuff on sports. And he's like, every joke's kind of just got sports attached to it a yeah. little bit. You know, yeah. Yeah. I was flying the other day. They had a sports game on TV. <laughs> anyway, can you believe they're selling the peanuts in the thing? We were watching the sports. Uh, everybody had a playoffs run. Can you... What is up with these <laughs> flight attendants? You know, this girl comes by peanuts, and then some guy was watching football towards the front, and then <laughs> like that's the only way it's got, <laughs> that's the only way he's including sports. Yeah. Ah, because the, the other day, ah, oh, my wife's cheating on me. She, I went, to, we were watching baseball. It doesn't matter. And the other day, <laughs> I go home, and my my kid who doesn't like sports, but he <laughs> he just keeps saying. <laughs> And they're like, I don't know if these are sports related jokes. They're not really based in sports stuff, right? And he's like, yeah. kinda. <laughs> I've done that. I did, you have like some themed stand up yeah. shows here in town, like do all Christmas jokes. So you're like, anyway, last Christmas I was at McDonald's and yeah. I went through the drive through. <laughs> and do your big. Had yeah. nothing to do with Christmas. Yeah. I, I, you can. I do love because I do it too. I always love thing that uh, that comics do is if if you got a seasonal joke how to get it back around mm -hmm. and uh like because you can do it like i mean yeah. it's in peak form when you're you got some great christmas joke and you're like christmas season is coming you have about probably november to february that you could say christmas just happened or christmas season's coming where it's the joke that seems timely and then those other months you gotta like you know, what's your favorite holiday? Mine, Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got to find a new way to right. do it. I love seeing that. I worked with a comic who I worked with during the summer, and every show he opened up with a joke about how hot it was. And then I worked with him several months later <laughs> in the winter, and I was like, I'm looking forward. How is he good? <laughs> so he, went up, yeah. and he goes, Man, it's cold out. Remember how hot it was in the summer? <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. so hot. I yeah. was like, oh, you, Yeah. Did it. I tell the the ponytail yeah. thing? Yeah, I love that. I've told it on this. I've I think so. I don't know if on the podcast. Yeah, I'll tell if yeah. I've told it. I'm sorry. My favorite of that kind of moment was uh, the when I when I was first starting. I started. I moved to Chicago first, and uh, when I would come home, I would then do. I never did comedy before here, like I said. But then when I came back, I would be the guy that came back from Chicago. Do I'm doing comedy in Chicago, and so we'd go to the bar car, which was they had this open mic. And I'd always, every time I came back, I would go up and do those shows. So this one guy, sometimes I would. And one time I came when I came back in between Chicago and New York. I it might have been during that time, but I lived. I kind of just lived here for four months to save money to move to New York, and so I'm back here. We're doing the bar card. This guy has a ponytail. He just did. We're open micers, so no one, everybody only really has maybe three to five minutes of material. And so we're all doing our jokes, and he had, he would just do jokes on ponytails. That's all he did. He had a ponytail. I don't remember the jokes, but he's like talking about having a ponytail, what it's like having a ponytail. Full five minutes of just ponytail material. <laughs> so the next week he shows up, his ponytail's gone. <laughs> he has no ponytail. He cut it off. And so we're like, what are you going to do? All you've ever done is ponytail stuff. And he was like offended that we asked. He goes, I have other stuff. And we go, okay. So they brought him up. He opens it. First joke he does is not about the ponytail. It's just about nothing. It bombs hard. And then he goes, so I used to have a ponytail. <laughs> and then just does all his ponytail stuff. And his ponytail's gone. <laughs> but he, that was his best stuff. So he, he's like, I can't belt. You know, I love that it was that quick. Oh, like, dude. Ooh. He, he, the first joke is about nothing. Yeah. He just got, and he goes, all right. So I used to have a ponytail. And he just does his ponytail material, which it like doesn't work. Yeah. The other one, I did I ever talk about this? I don't remember. Uh, 
the happy birthday to Root. Like, do you ever say that story? Uh, it's probably offensive. I don't know. <laughs> it's not my joke. But when I was in New York, this comic, he used to run. We would we would run at the Improv, a Broadway comedy club now. We Dustin Chafin, who's about to have a actually uh, has a Zoom uh, I don't know, has a Zoom special out that he's putting out actually now because uh, this is coming out next week and I think it's coming pre pre sales uh, was just last Friday and so it's coming out uh, now Zoom comedy with Dustin Chafin go to his, his yeah so uh, it's not that but it's <laughs> yeah it's Twitter and so uh, I'll promote it too next week. But he, uh, I started with him. Look, I'm the main first podcast right there. Uh, he's got a podcast. I'll leave you with this. And so Dustin is who uh, I kind of started with. Dustin was a huge part of my comedy career and helped me uh, do it. Uh, so he, he does, uh, I don't know if any of this is it. All right. But we're trying to find it online if you're looking. Okay. But I'll, I'll, I'll promote it next week. But he's a comic that I started with. And uh he uh, is putting out a Zoom, he's, it's a Zoom comedy of 2020. It's a different way because it's the way we have to do it now. So anyway, so we'd run a show at midnight. This, and it was this uh, edgy, it was uncensored show, which I always had to do and was never, I never needed to be censored. So he, this other guy would run a show uptown. And he would always just come and like, if his show wasn't like doing good, He'd be like, hey, he'd call, he'd like call me. And I was just running the show. I was helping Dustin run the show. And I remember he'd call me and be like, hey, uh, can I bring, I have like only three people show up for the show tonight. I'm going to bring them down to your show. And then can I get on stage? So he'd use, he'd like barter with me. Mm -hmm. Maybe a couple of times you'd be like, okay. But we were like, Dustin's show was like, I mean, it was like a packed, it'd be midnight, dude. And we would be sold out in this upstairs room. That was probably my favorite room in New York. It was just this box and it was just, I mean, when it was packed, dude, you would murder in there. It was so awesome. And you would all just be there. These are the stuff that I miss about New York is just, you'd, it'd be, you'd be out there till two in the morning and it's just it, doing these shows, just so much fun. A bunch of comics hanging out. Everybody kind of ends their night there after they do shows. And so he would always call me and be like, and we'd start being sold out. He's like, I got two people and I'm going to bring them down. Can I get up? And you're like, I don't, I'm like, dude, we're sold out. I don't need, but he's just trying to get stage time. And I remember he always had to ride the train down with these people. These are just audience members that he's like, just come ride with me. I'll take you to another show. And they're, you know, it's almost like the quarter thing falling where you're just kind of like, all right, I guess I'm riding with this guy. Yeah. And then you're just on the way down. So anyway, so he had this joke and it's probably insulting. I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's a very hacky joke. So, but he would say, uh, if you went and had your birthday party at a Chinese restaurant, <laughs> How would they, you know, they sing it, happy birthday to Rue, happy birthday to Rue. Like, that's the joke that they don't say, they say ours. And so he would start it, and he'd be like, all right, who's got a birthday in here? One night, we were not, there was not that many people there. And he goes, all right, who's got a birthday in here? And no one raises their hand. He goes, nobody has a birthday in here? Nobody. And no one's raising their hand. And he goes, you, you have a birthday? He goes, my birthday was two weeks ago. He goes, what about you? He's like, my birthday's like seven months from now. He's like, nobody has a, and I mean, it can, it's almost it's just like everybody's like looking like just do the joke man like and he's like nobody has to some you know some guy finally just goes i mean my cousin's birthday's next week he's like all right all right so if you took your cousin to have birthday at a chinese restaurant here's how they would sing it happy birthday to rue happy birthday to rue. happy birthday dear customer and then everybody's like okay and then he's like all right good night everybody and he leaves and so I just remember, I remember thinking, why I, I don't want to ever do a joke where I have to have <laughs> yeah. someone in the crowd go with it. It sounds like he didn't even need that part of the no, joke. No, he doesn't at all. <laughs> hey, you ever been to Chinese restaurant? And here's how they sing happy birthday Yeah, to right, you. yeah. I mean, you could, yeah, anything. <laughs> but he just does it. And you're like, I mean, the joke's already just disgustingly hacked. Like, yeah. it's, it's not a good joke. Yeah. But it's like the idea that he has to bring someone in on it. And then someone's finally like, I mean, dude, people could just tell, like, someone just say it's your birthday. Yeah. This guy's not leaving. And he's trying to leave. Yeah. There's a uh, Jay, big, speaking of Jay, Jay had a story. Angel, Angel Sal, Salador. Here is, he was in uh, uh, Scarface. He's a comedian. And he would always do that where he'd, he'd have some girl about uh, Angel Salazar. And he would have, uh, he would always talk to someone and be like, 
hey, big guy, hey, big guy. He talked to, like, so he pointed to you. He's like, hey, big guy. You'd be like, hey, what's up? And so he does it, and he always goes, hey, big guy. And then he goes, hey, big guy. And the, no one's, the guy's not saying anything. He goes, big guy. And the guy's, like, looking around. He goes, hey, big guy. He's like, oh, you mean me? He goes, hey, big guy. And the, he's like, I mean, I'm not that big of a guy. He was, like, my size. He's like, he's like I'm not that big of a guy. I, just, I thought you'd be, when you say big guy, it's usually someone bigger. Yeah. And but Angel never talks to him. He just goes, "Hey, big guy," <laughs> and he finally has to go. Okay, he goes, "You got a girlfriend?" He's like, "I don't." He goes, "I don't. I don't have a girlfriend right now." He goes, "You got a girlfriend?" He goes, "I don't. I don't have a girlfriend right." He goes, "Hey, big guy, you got a girlfriend?" The guy's like, "I don't. I, I get. I got a girlfriend." He goes, "Huh?" Eh? You girl? And then he said something about your girlfriend. I'm I had sex with your girlfriend. The joke is like that. Yeah, it's just an insult. But he just he wouldn't let the. I mean, just the the guy to go. I don't. The guy's talking more than he is. Yeah. I don't. I don't know that big of a guy. Hey, big guy. Hey, big guy. He goes. I don't. I'm not that. You know. You talking about me? Hey, big guy. He just. He's. It's a guy that's done this joke, ten thousand times. And it's like a robot that just doesn't, he just can't get out of it. Yeah. He, everyone's know, big guy. <laughs> everyone's big guy. Hey, big guy. Hey, big guy. And it's like, yeah, it's like, shut him off, man. Uh, the other one, someone get in that mode was, uh, who was the movie voice guy? Uh, Michael Winslow? No. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pablo Francisco. Yeah, Pablo Francisco. Pablo. I mean, sadly, he, he had, if you can watch a clip of that, you don't have to show the clip. I don't want to show right. it. But if anybody wants to look it up, they can uh but he he like has a he has major drug problems and had just f lost it on stage and so his thing right was always like hello i am movie phone and i mean this dude made a career i mean it is he's very talented obviously <laughs> he can do a bunch of stuff but would just tour around sell out these places for a long time made tons of money but had major drug problems and he was at uh, punchline sacramento i was there to, oh, the week after him oh really and uh he uh, was on stage in this video of it, and he's just so whacked out on just so much stuff. I mean, the, the opener has to go back up there, and he keeps going, hello, I am. No, they want to hear it. No, they, and everybody, he's like, you got to go, man. You know, you don't know what's going He's like, hello. He just keeps doing the yeah. same movie phone joke over and over. That was the sad one. Mm. Yeah. But it's like crazy to be like, you're just in this routine. That, that's what I'm always scared of being. Mm. I'm going to just be up there in Starbucks, and I went to iced coffee with milk, and I'm just like, <laughs> in a corner just going <laughs> iced coffee whipped cream whipped cream whipped cream whipped cream i just keep saying it over and over in some corner brian comes out as like, hey nick you should probably leave the stage yeah right he goes, like, no, no, no. He me. no 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 they want to hear I it think he kept saying, i'm gonna get myself out of this I myself. That Pablo <laughs> i'm gonna get myself I'll out get, of this here we go that's what we like like he still knew that he was kind of bombing yeah while he was still trapped <laughs> yeah. in that loop it's kind of fascinating to watch that's there's not Little a comic on earth that doesn't boy. think uh that doesn't think the crowd's bad i'll get them yeah i'll get them you, I mean, that's every comic. You go, hey, this crowd's like terrible, man. And you go, I mean, I'm sure they're terrible for y'all, like, but I'll get them. Yeah. And then you usually you go, oh, no, they're terrible. <laughs> and then you go off and go, I know what you're thinking, but I promise they're terrible. <laughs> and then you go, I got them. Yeah. And then usually one person gets them yeah. and is like, I thought they were great. I thought they were great. <laughs> uh, all right. Weather. Well, Okay. <laughs> Well, we we wanted to get into yeah, weather. Right. Yeah, we all love weather. I think that's 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 true. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan. Weather's fun. The four seasons. Daniel Toss joke. That's a very that's funny a one. Would you uh, I mean, like all seasons? Because we skip the bad ones. Yeah, that's why I live in a place that skips the, the bad ones. bad ones. Yeah, he doesn't say bad, but we're uh, <laughs> clean pot. Uh, would you guys be uh, storm chasers? I would do it in a heartbeat. Really. Well, I would do it in a heartbeat. If anybody does it, and they do it at a high level, professional level and listening, you, you let me know. Yeah. And I'll come do it with you. You wouldn't want a guy who just does it on his own, just with no certifications? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. That guy could be pretty fun. If that guy is into it, I don't, A, I don't know if there's any certification for any of this. Oh, there is. Oh, there is? So you have to go through a thing. Well, I mean, there's nobody going to stop I you. I used to watch a show. I watched a movie about it. This They were filming this what was the show? It was the Storm Chaser Twister? show? Twister? No. Yeah, yeah. That was a documentary. Uh, I thought that was real. Uh, no, there was a TV show about storm chasing. And during it, they, it showed them like how they all lived. They went and stayed in these hotels, and they'd get up every day and go chase tornadoes. And they, it was on Discovery. It was, it was awesome. 
No. And during it, they were filming, they're trying to film this 3D. They're like, they had a car that they're trying to basically get in a tornado mm-hmm. and then film this IMAX version of this tornado. And so one guy that was a part of the Storm Chasers was with them being like, hey, we're trying to shoot this as a movie. Can we go with you? And so they made a car. The guy had a car that was designed to like, when the tornado is over it, it goes down to the ground. It was almost like you could get no wind under it to lift it. And uh, the movies play, played at uh, the Hunt, Huntsville at the Space Center. You'd see it like at a science museum or something That's like cool. that. And I went and saw it. It was fun to watch it and then go, oh, this is the movie that they were trying to make. And I watched the show. Okay. Yeah. Love it. It's kind of like uh, your jokes when you watch them be informed like on the podcast and then you yeah. get to go see the final thing and you get to go see the final thing which is right. like you're happen. in on it like you were in on it all right so you can do it as a hobby you uh if you want get in contact with the national weather service and they got some programs if you want to do it as a profession they say it's important to note most people don't make a lot of money uh average salary starting out eighteen thousand dollars okay um so many support chasers support themselves with a second job or do it seasonally but um eighteen thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. And that's so you have to get certified. I would I would love it. I would you wouldn't want to go I mean, see a real tornado, man, that would just would be in like insane. What do you do? Do how what do you do you try to get inside of it? Or what do you what do you do? I mean it's kind of what the title is. Is you chase the You're storm. chasing it, but but what's do you get all like I think you're trying to you're you don't go away. And now if it comes after you, you're gonna move. But how close do it you get to ch- it? You just want to follow it at a, running. at a certain distance? Yeah, yeah. They know how to get They get where they oh. can really film it. Oh, I mean, I do that. The sure. guys that are, uh, some are doing it, like, you know, the movie Twister, where they're trying to get something taken up in the, yeah. but I mean, there's people that are trying to, I think, get that close to, cause just to understand a tornado. Mm-hmm. But when you see them, it's always like most cars going this way and then one car going towards it. Yeah. And they're, and they're trying to get near it. And so... They they see a tornado. They're trying to go to the tornado. Justin Smith, who I was with, uh, who's with me on the one night only tour, he lives in Oklahoma, and so we were there when the tornado came. Uh, and I know I say tornado, so I know because I say winda. <laughs> and this Colorado, yellow, this Colorado mm-hmm. yellow, that was beta Colorado, Colorado. Yeah. Uh, so but he so he tornado and so he goes tornado. Uh, or tornado, Nader, Nader. <laughs> this Nader came over, and uh, so we we went. It was the big one that they had that like wrecked that town, yeah. and so I was there. I was at a comedy club there, and uh, side splitters, I think, or I don't figure they have there, but the Looney Bin, Oklahoma, Looney City? Bin, yeah, yeah, Looney Bin. So I, I was there, and the day before, they had a tornado go through one of the towns. I want to say Norman, maybe where Oklahoma University is, and it was really bad. And when I went with him out, and we did. I did try to kind of go see what was happening and try to find one, and we just didn't. But, I mean, we were just driving in the car. There was something with the, the uh, I forget now. The, the, we were listening to the news, and they were just talking to someone. I forget what it was. It was very funny. How just the news covering of it. I was taking it personal. I think it was like very, you know, it was like, do you see a tornado? And they're like, he's like, yeah, it's real over here. He's like, all right, just do it. He's like, all right, well, I'm see- okay, I guess I see it, but I guess you don't want to talk to me. Like would say stuff like that. <laughs> like they'd go, all right, well, we're going to come back to you. All right, yeah, I'm the one out here. Uh, but yeah, go do whatever you're going to go do. <laughs> I mean, I'm the one that is seeing all of it. Would always like kind of say stuff like that right before they go off the air. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, and she's really making it about this. He's like, all right, thanks, Samantha. We're going to be back to you probably later. He's like, probably. Yeah. I mean, I'm the main person here. I don't see you. Okay, all right. <laughs> and then it just would cut off to the next thing. Uh, but we went and watched it. And then I flew out that next morning. And I remember I had to fly out early. I don't ever fly out early. I'm, I'm usually like a, I try to be like a 10 a.m. to noon flight guy. And uh, I had, a, I left at like, I didn't, I didn't go to sleep. I just went to the airport and left at 5.30. And uh, that big one came through that day. I would have never got out. Wow. I mean, I, I like you know, I'm not saying I would have died, but it would have been. I would have been stuck. I mean, that came through. It was. I mean, it was one of the worst. You know. Wow. But you have the the one, the big one here. This earlier this year. Yeah. No, yeah. not this year. The there was one this year, but then the one 
in uh, there was one at night. That's the craziest one. We had one come through Williamson County at night, and a, and a lady died. That those are that's the scariest thing on earth because you don't know. Yeah. Well, there's one that came through here March third. Yeah. Through downtown and and yeah, it came right over us. We've got the footage. Well, that's what I shot from my from my deck. I mean, you can't see a ton. Will we be able to show this footage? Will Brian not allow it? <laughs> we'll see. I'll think Breakfast about it. is like the MLB. He doesn't want his own footage shown. Why is that? So yeah. That's Transformer. Uh, Explo- that's, like the, that's like the tornado. Yeah. You're tracking it by the explosions. So you don't know where it's at until you see an explosion, and the explosions happen because of it. Yeah. A tornado at night is, you don't even think about it. Because it's, I don't think they're, like super super common yeah right all right we can yeah. mute it and just uh we it's like trying to talk someone on the phone when they're in the wind you ever call <laughs> someone and you're like uh, okay i can't and they're like oh, i mean it's I footage of tornado and you're like oh, all right it's fine but huh? i shot myself and you're was like, that okay, did it whatever. show the tornado it showed i saw the explosions yeah but it's just funny how you just kind of just so blew it off like so i didn't blow like, it off i saw the explosions i don't know what else you want me to do <laughs> we have a podcast that has to keep going i can't stop and admire with silence <laughs> and there's just wind blowing through the thing so i was like all right just cut the wind out it's i saw the explosions that was the tornado right Wasn't that was that it, it going through there right? yeah. yeah yeah and then yeah. what else happened after that well i mean the obviously it just destroyed everything in its path and it kind of went right over. our power yeah, went is that out. the video of yeah. it destroying everything yeah. in the path was that the rest of it the one that you're so mad at me for not watching the end of it <laughs> is that what i missed it's just so funny like i have a first-hand experience and you just moved on just kept talking about no no stuff. i talked about it we watched 20 seconds of it then it was just wind noise <laughs> and there's people that are can't see this video at home i don't know if y'all know how a podcast works but people are not watching this where they're not all in this room so we have to keep it moving. And y'all just are like, all right, dude, why don't, okay, I guess you don't want to play my wind noise of this dark tornado that no one can, you can't even see on you the see, screen. You can't see it up there. You can see it. You can see it move across here that night. But I get what you're saying. No, it's it, fine. It sounds like, you know, somebody's like speakerphone. With, like, yeah, I'm going down the interstate. Yeah. The cars roll down. And then they the whole, he roll his windows up a yeah. little bit. He's like, oh, you've been talking to him for an hour. Are you outside? No, the windows are down. You mean you could have stopped this, dude? You could have stopped it by rolling the windows up? And you did it? All right. Brian's heroin. Go ahead. <laughs> heroin experience. Is it heroin? I don't know. Harrowing? Yeah, oh. harrowing. I'll say a harrowing experience. I thought you was on heroin. And a heroin uh, experience. In the middle of mixing Pretty both. different. <laughs> yeah. You got video of your heroin experience. Yeah. Let's watch that. Well, if he shows down on that video, you're going to see a heroin experience. Because <laughs> he lived. There's all the... <laughs> the drug, all the drug addicts live right below him. Well, so you could have got both. Here's a harrowing experience, and well, here's that, a heroin experience, <laughs> and you just show up and down. Because <laughs> it wasn't it all like on your street. You would see fights, and I'd see a lot. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot going on. Yeah, <laughs> you can yeah. rent this apartment on Airbnb. Uh, <laughs> um, you know the 2011 super. Breakout tornado it was the worst in U.S. history. The one that went through Alabama and yeah. Tuscaloosa and all that. Right. Yeah. So we were. Those are such crazy, uh, crazy tornadoes. We were at, doing shows at Stardome that weekend. Oh yeah. I was there with Angela, and we went over to Tuscaloosa, and she bought a bunch of supplies, and we delivered it to people there. But we just got to go through the damage, and it was just so crazy. We've had it with my high school, Donaldson Christian yeah. Academy. Uh, yeah has been hit with a flood and a tornado. And so the last one that came through this year just ripped my high school up, just yeah. ripped it up bad. And we we're trying to do a show for them. And then COVID happened. They just really got dealt uh, uh, a bad hand. And uh, I know everybody's still there. And so it was brutal. But I drove over there. And we, if you go through, you know, I almost, I, I took uh, my daughter. And it's almost like not a bad, you know, I don't know. It's, it's all a bad thing. But like, for a kid to see, I don't know, maybe it could go do different ways. But I think it's, like, good for them to see it. Right. You know, just to be like, look, this is serious. You know, look, these people. It, what we noticed is it's always the in the bathroom. The middle of the house is always up mm-hmm. in most places. It's kind of crazy to think, like, like you see a bathtub and then maybe the walls in the middle. Yeah. And these houses are level. I mean, just level. Yeah. Not, you know, we got some wind damage on the roof. I mean, the whole thing's gone. Uh. We had, I remember the, so the one that came through Nashville my senior year in high school, 97, 
and right, 97? 98. 98. So I'd been right in the middle of Volunteer State Community College, getting no credits, taking speech. And we, I remember I had to go pick up, we had a one that came, and it came, it came down, uh, God, we've had a bunch of them. I actually remember another time. One came down our street, that old house we used to live on. But this one was a huge one that came through Nashville. Yeah, this great video of that downtown. Uh, we're, we're good with the video. All right. And it, no, I'm joking. <laughs> it, you know, if there's a video of that, show that video. Uh, they maybe won't be at night. And uh, <laughs> this one was during the day. But so I remember watching this one. So I was not, it's 1998. And I remember my, it, it came through uh, Old Hickory. I was thinking Andrew Jackson's house, the Hermitage, all these trees you used to not be able to see the house from the road because there's so many trees. And now you can see the house. And I always thought that I was like, that's so crazy. It took that many trees yeah. out. And uh, we, I remember my mom called me and was like, go get, I went and picked my sister up. She was in elementary school and I went and picked her up. And then my aunt, I think was at our house. Maybe I don't remember. No, our, it was me, my brother and uh, my sister. And I went out back and was filming trying to see if I would get anything. And when it was like happening yeah. and I, I mean, nothing ever came directly over near us to really see it but you were at channel five yeah that's footage right there from channel five yeah Are i remember seeing this, this on footage? the news uh if you're watching wow. this we're post again we're posting some of this stuff in the instagram stories or any uh we but went, went right through downtown yeah. right through downtown yeah wow that one was crazy that girl's trying to open the door and they can't get it open for her and the yeah. tornado is coming down the street that's our front lobby at yeah at channel five you were there you were in crazy. that building yep and was it just like a train yeah, I mean, we all went down to the basement. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, it was crazy. It knocked us, knocked us off there. And then the yeah, building he had hit twice, the flood of 2010. Yeah. I mean. It's, uh, when you're, you know, when you're, that kind of stuff, it's so helpless. It's just something coming through. Whether That's what's so crazy. It's such yep. a, there's nothing you can do. Anything that, you know, obviously a robbery like, I don't know. There's just stuff you could stop it. There's right. things to stop fire. You, you can put, it. Yeah. you know, I mean, there's nothing to do with the fires is roaring, but there's at least hope. Like there's something, a tornado, for some reason, like earthquake feels the same way. We feel an earthquake. The whole earthquake was the most helpless I've ever felt. Cause it's everywhere. You can't run from it. You can't not, you know, you can step here. It's there. You could run half a mile during an earthquake. You go fill it that whole half. Like that's, uh -huh. was this when you no lived in LA? It. Yeah. We went to LA. We felt one in New York too. When the New York one happened, Laura was working in one of the big buildings and she felt it. But the one in earthquake, the first one I ever felt was wild, man. I mean, it was unbelievable. It's uh, feeling an earthquake. I, there's, you know, people in California don't even think about them. But if you have never, have you ever I've felt never one? felt one. Mm. You felt one? I did a terrible gig in Oklahoma. The whole weekend was so terrible. The only thing I got excited about, we had an earth, like I felt my first earthquake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's my, crazy. My right? hotel room. Yeah. Yeah. If someone, it's, <laughs> Hated the gig, but I loved yeah. that I felt earthquake. Yeah. <laughs> I hope this... The highlight of the trip was a natural disaster. I hope this plane flies right into a mountain. That's, you just hope, I hope this earthquake sucks us all under. Uh, it's... Uh, yeah, these tornadoes, the, uh, the craziest one... Uh, where's the one in Missouri? It's the biggest one. Yeah, Joplin. Joplin. Joplin goes through. I mean, this thing is enormous. It's... Uh, you know, I think it's like a quarter of a mile. Uh, that yeah, two thousand eleven. Yeah, it goes through. I mean, it's the big. It's an uh, E five. Is it? E, is that what they say? E five. Yeah. E F five tornado, and I mean, it's just like it's so big that it's like that's not it. Keep just scroll through it real fast and see if you just see. It's so big that it, it just looks like dark clouds. Yeah. Like, that's how big it is. Mm -hmm. And El Reno, Oklahoma has the widest tornado ever recorded, 2.6 miles wide. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, that's just wiping out. That's just wiping out of town, dude. That's, yeah. I mean, that's that's your. You're right. That's the scary thing about these is you you literally, it hits and you're like, well, we just got to wait it out. Yeah. We can't do anything you about it. You can't do anything about it. There's nothing you can do. It's so crazy. Uh, see these base hunter guys? I ain't going to get it, You man. could be one of the. Maybe we'll do that as the Nate Land. You know, we need someone Nate to come hunters. with us. Nate the, hunters, tornado hunters, tornado hunters, tornadoers. What are you guys riding? The flying penguin? 
And then we have a penguin that we drive in <laughs> that's, that's, that's shaped yeah. that can handle the wind. See, I'd be much more willing to do something with a tornado than just about any other natural disaster. Why? Hurricanes terrify me. Uh, the the water element of it terrifies me. There's so much. I mean, they're hundreds of miles yeah. across. Them coming in, they're slow, too. Like, you see them, and you're like, here it oh, comes. Oh, yeah, here it comes. And you can't do anything about it. You can't do anything it. about it. It's right. happening. You can move. A tornado, you know, it's, you, can, you can get away from it. I feel like you're mocking tornadoes. No, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, I don't. You can't just drive a mile to the left and, and be away from a hurricane. You can leave three weeks before yeah. they say it gets here. I, I mean, have a joke like a, about that. It's got a heads up notice of, hey guys, there's a tornado that's out in the ocean bothering nobody. We think it's going to come here <laughs> in about a month. If you guys, because you gather your stuff, some of you could probably sell your home. You have enough time to sell your home. That's my joke. <laughs> is it what you say? Yes. Uh, yeah. In Nashville, you could already sold your home for more than you asked for and be living somewhere else. Uh, by the time, by the, the, time the hurricane arrived. gets yeah. there? Yeah. Hey, that's fair. You know? I'm talking about in the context of being a storm chaser and going going to work. Yeah. Well, if you go down there and stand in the in the feel <laughs> the winds, I think it's it it does there's it's relentless the right. hurricane. But again, you're putting yourself in it, so that's why the fear of it, I don't understand. Tornado just happens. It's there, it's on top of you. It's so, you know. Yeah. But hurricane, you have to go put you can avoid a hurricane for the rest of your life. You can avoid a tornado pretty easy, dude. How? I, I've never come across one i've been have been doing much wrong attitude. it's been working for me dude huh it's been working for you've me. never had it you, we've had them come through no, i'm from alabama they're always a but i've never never been up in one's face no i know, right, I don't well, know I, no, yes yeah. the odds of but your odds are just your odds of a hurricane is zero as if, as long as you don't go dry near it but a tornado yeah. you're always walking around with the odds of a tornado mm. can happen it's just on the table in some, Tornadoes some parts happen. of the country, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. They, I mean, we get a ton of them here. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma gets it. We get like 90% of the world's tornadoes, I think, right? What I mean, do you I mean about we? That number out of yeah. nowhere. The United States. Oh, I thought How many spiders Tennessee. are nearest right now? Because <laughs> <laughs> I think tornadoes elsewhere in the world are fairly rare. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like an American phenomenon. You don't have them. That's right. It's our thing. <laughs> Go USA. I don't think you have them west of the Rockies, do you? I don't know. No one ever says west of the Rockies that much anymore. Uh, That's where you have the earthquakes. I'd have to think about where that's even. Uh, I mean, that's like south of the. I mean, that's. Uh, I don't know. Mostly Sunbelt stuff, right? You're like, what are you talking about? I don't, I don't know. In the Tennessee Valley? Yeah, yeah. That's like. <laughs> West of the Rockies. Yeah. <laughs> west of Mississippi. You guys get what about west of Mississippi? I don't go that far. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, do they have them? They, I don't. Uh, I'm trying to think if New York's ever had one. Tornadoes? They have hurricanes, but. Um, I think they have them some. I think everybody's got something. That's what's crazy. Everybody gets. Something. I don't think like California gets tornadoes, though, do they? No, I don't think so. Do Californians get tornadoes? Look and see if nah. California gets a tornado. They're west of the Rockies. I don't think west of the Rockies. Uh, but they get earthquakes. Yeah. That's crazy. Everybody gets a thing. I yeah. think New York had a tornado. You got to go to like Idaho. What's Idaho? They don't got anything going on. They got a lot going on. But they're more common than you might think. 2010, average, they had 11 tornadoes. While California, what, what did it say about Kansas? Average 62. 96 Kansas. Yeah. 96. That's so many. But I guess that's all different sizes. Right. Uh, and most of them don't touch the ground. Yeah. The most way we started, think about. Yeah. Most are pretty weak, right? <laughs> most are pretty stupid. That's what I would say. Right, Aaron? <laughs> I'm trying to put a positive most, spin on most, this, dude. Most, no, I'm saying that you're, you're like, you, you don't. You you don't respect tornadoes. I hope a tornado follows you home tonight. I hope it drives right behind your car. <laughs> then I just go. And you try to zigzag I just go out kind of it. fast, and I'd outrun it, no problem. <laughs> yeah, you find. You just and it wouldn't pick yeah. up an you, ocean. And how dump fast it on would you go? I say I would never get pulled over by the cops. I'm not going. I that mean, fast. you'd be <laughs> you think, watching West Wing. You don't even see it. <laughs> hey, that's fair. There's a great hurricane storyline in West Wing. You tell me, it's insane to be more afraid of a hurricane than a tornado. Yeah. Tornadoes are a surprise. Hurricanes are, it's, you know, I mean, it, hurricanes are bad and people stay. But a lot of times when it happens, they either, look, they can't move. 
their circumstances. They go tell them, even Katrina, they tried, they were getting everybody out. I'm just not saying it, it tears up a whole town. Right. Hurricanes do way more damage. But as far as a human being dying, I mean, a tornado just could pop up on us right now. It could be right behind. Is there one right behind <laughs> me right now? I mean, they, it could be that easy that you just don't look. He's always just looking and coming. They come out of nowhere. Think about the ones at night, dude. It's at night. That one that came through Williamson County. Yeah. I remember we, we, Harper's asleep. Uh, we just went in like the a middle closet of the house and uh, we just kind of sat in there because we didn't know how long it was going to be. And I was watching it. It's like two in the morning and it's just pitch black dark. I mean, people don't even know that y- you could look, be looking at it and you wouldn't know until you flew away. Like, you know. Well, you might hear it. We hear a loud you know. noise, yes, yeah. but you don't know the idea of it. It's not going here. I come chug, 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 chug. It's making little <laughs> chugging noises. But you see his the video. His video is great video. Brian shot if yeah. you even cared about it, <laughs> and it's a video about wind sound. <laughs> uh, and they, <laughs> you would see those sparks. Well, those sparks aren't heads up. The sparks is I'm on you. I'm on yeah. top of you. Yeah. So that's, you know, that you're seeing the tornado fly. Crazy. That's fair. So how many earthquakes do you guys think we had in Tennessee last year? Zero. Seven. 301. No. Who's, what are they counting? <laughs> they have a ton of small, there's some small ones all the time. They're like the East Tennessee. Like you just barely feel them. Yeah. Yep. You feel them though? In East Tennessee, like, yeah. 300. That's it. I've never, I don't, uh, I don't know if I felt one here. I don't think I felt one here either. Yeah. But, but uh, so California, they they keep preparing for the big one. So uh, the last really big one they had was, uh, I guess, nineteen ninety four, depending on what you consider big, which caused seventy two deaths. But the big one they think will hit will be forty four times stronger than that one. That was the the World Series game. Now the World Series was eighty nine. Oh. Um. So they have a forty eight percent chance of the big one hitting within the next thirty years, on the same. Andreas Paul. And so that hits, what happens? A major death destruction. I, That's not good. I joke that it, California would fall into the ocean. Yeah. That was from Superman 1. Uh, That's what he said. Well, <laughs> there was a missile that yeah. went to California. But they said it won't fall in the ocean. But there's going to be major, major destruction. For just California. Well, the West, we coast, here? the West Coast. The West Coast. No. East yeah. of the Rockies won't. East of the Rockies. <laughs> so we're good east of the Rockies. Yeah. But if you're in it, it's like all of California feels this. Oh, yeah. All the West Coast. Yeah. Every state, every part. And it just is like, is it one crack? Is like just going to, everything's going to fall down. Yeah. The San Andreas Fault. They said, I mean, this is years from years from now, Los Angeles and San Francisco will be close to each other. Really? Yeah. Because they're going to just. Eat. But this, they're talking like thousands and thousands. All right. Yeah. Years from yeah, that feels like a very loose thing that I can. Well, I know. I, it's, that's again, scientists get to just go, you know. That's why I almost didn't tell you. Yeah, because it's what scientists get to do. You know, I could just go out and be like, you know what? Seattle will become San Diego and San Diego will become Seattle <laughs> in a thousand years. And you'd be like, ah, oh, that's crazy. He goes, yeah, I'm a scientist. I've studied this. You're like, I don't know how you study that. <laughs> Did you look it up and stuff? He's like, no, I, I am the look up. What I write is the lookup. Yeah, I'm the source. And then how are we going to, you know, is there any, is he going to get in trouble if that doesn't happen? Making outlandish things. Yeah. <laughs> it's a six, it's a, it's a six hour drive. He's going to be right next, right now. San Francisco to Los Angeles is a six hour drive. It's going to be next to each other. When? <laughs> Just long enough that you won't be alive to prove. Like that's, that's always the yeah. thousand years. That means if you, you could never have your family. Like, I would want to now, I'll tell my daughter, to tell her kids to be like, don't stop this chain, <laughs> and I won't be here. None of us will be here, but I want, in a thousand years, I want a Bargetzi to find that scientist's family and go, hey, guess what? It's a little bit farther away than it was, you know? Yeah. This is what they think the world will look like. When? Millions of years from now. <laughs> Where are we at? <laughs> This oh. is North America right here, dude. <laughs> so like it's basically like every like we're a drain and everything's gonna just f- float next to you. That's basically if you don't if you're listening, it would be like, well, what if the world became a drain and every every country just floated on top of each other? 
That's what the world's going to look like. The Penguin Ultima. Penguia Ultima. These are just, these are a few different theories of what it'll look, you know, under yeah, a million I mean, years a child, in the future. A child could draw that on a map. <laughs> I could go get a kid and go, just draw me what you think the world looks like now. I'm going to put it on a website next to my doctor name and tell people this is what it's going to look like in 4 million years. <laughs> and everybody goes, oh man, we should listen to that guy. Right? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know who made this. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. It kind of I mean, looks like a kid drawing. Arthur. It, it looks like a kid trying to draw the world. Yeah. You know? And it's real bad. That's like the weather. You know, we talk about weather people. They, they always get yelled at. Weathermen. Uh, they get yelled at because they get weather wrong. Yeah. But I always think, I, for some reason to me, I'm like always, I'm very lenient with that. I don't ever get mad. Like, it's like, what do you want them to do, man? They People get furious. And you're like, yeah, dude. I just, it, it, you know, it's a good gauge. Yeah. You're usually going to be happy. Because it usually means it's supposed to rain all week and it didn't. Yeah. So you're like, oh, great. Mm-hmm. But back off these weather people, man. Like, give them, they're doing what they can. Predicting the future. Yeah. How about this? How about this? <laughs> How about this theory where all the other continents go up towards the North Pole and Antarctica goes stays where it is? So we all just kind of join up at the top. Yeah, everybody's at the top. We're So we're living on the North Pole. <laughs> Africa, still going to be hot. Can you imagine they go, God, is it going to cool down a little bit? You're like, actually, you kind of probably get hotter. (laughs) And you're like, what, dude? Like, I mean, everywhere else is going to be north. Like, we're going to be so cold. And Africa's like, you know what? I I wouldn't hate it. That's what someone says in Africa. I wouldn't hate it. And you're like, well, I got some bad news, Madagascar, because you might not move. There's a great chance you won't move. That's what we're that's what we're guessing. And that's yeah. what a scientist would sell Madagascar. He would do a speech about it. Scientists have suggested permanently dimming the sun to save South Africa from deadly dry spells. I mean, who is it a <laughs> drunk homeless guy that just shouts these ideas out? Turn the sun down. You know what man. we should do? Turn the sun down. <laughs> the plan involves pumping vast quantities of gas into the atmosphere above Cape Town to preserve local water supplies. Research subject injecting particles. So furious. <laughs> I mean, it's just <laughs> the gas would form a huge cloud above the city that reflects sunlight, dimming the environment on the ground below. I think that's a great idea. I mean, that's like you know, you can't yell at us about global warming and then this is the deal. This is you're like, well, how, what's your answer for it? We're gonna dim the sun <laughs> or some, whatever it is. It doesn't make. I can't imagine. Shooting gases up in the air. Isn't that the main thing? That's the problem? <laughs> we got too many gases in the air, and they're like, I know, but they're not these gases. Uh, I mean, unbelievable. Can you imagine if someone floats that idea to ta- at a science table? They're that just came science. out. That just came out. Yeah. 2020. Yeah. That's not some drunk scientist smoking a cigarette in a lab, <laughs> you know, I mean, where they doctors gave, they baby was born with a cigarette in his mouth. Like, but there was no rules. <laughs> yeah. That's 2020. Wow. That guy's in the middle of a pandemic. Wow. And this is what he's gotten to. You know what? What if we dim the sun? You're like, hey, why don't you not publicly let that get out that you said that? <laughs> That's what someone should have said to him immediately. <laughs> What'd you say? He said, hey, what guys, if we dim the sun? Uh, we should just turn the sun down a little bit. Wait, oh, we're just doing knob and just turn it down? <laughs> Install a dimmer, dude. Johnny, get Just Dr. Sadad. Con Johnny Dr. Red, Con. Johnny Red, <laughs> Johnny Red. On who it, do man. you think did that? Let's say one of the names is Doctor Con, the other is Johnny Red. Sounds like Johnny Red's <laughs> idea. You're right, Johnny Red. It's actually, sore, sore <laughs> Sogbe, sore Sogabor, oh, man, sore Sogor, sore Sogor, <laughs> sore. Uh, oh. sore. Go ahead, saw your hand up. What if we dim the sun? <laughs> Soar? Save your work, Soar, and then get out of here. Save, save your... Unbelievable. Save your work. Soar? <laughs> Soar, don't ever say something like that ever. Uh, right when Soar said it. Uh, what if we dim the sun? Can, uh, can everybody leave except Soar? And then everybody just got up and left. And he goes, Soar, what, what, what are you doing? Dude? What are you, out of your mind? Dim the sun. <laughs> 
You went to college, dude. You, I mean, like, what? They're teaching you stuff. They're teaching stuff. There's not a dimmer. You know how long it took us to learn to dim lights in a house? Yeah. And you want to dim the sun? It's not like we just figured that out. It wasn't like the light was invented, then we started dimming them. You want us to dim the sun? We don't even know. You know how big it is? It's gigantic. It's pretty big, man. It's pretty big. Oh, dude. He goes, it's not that big. He's like you against tornadoes. Not that. It's not that big. It's the least thing Listen, I'm worried. It's big, but I'm not. It's a, I, it's, I, out of all the universe, it's the, the least thing, thing I'm yeah. scared of is the sun. <laughs> um, a San Francisco geologist made a name for himself by accurately predicting the North Carolina, North, Northern California's 1989 earthquake. He combed the classified ads for local newspapers and saw that a large number of household pets had run away from home. He. Uh, made a conjecture that animals can sense earthquakes coming, and he was correct. In China in 1975, right before a major earthquake, brought hundreds of snakes abandoned their burrows <laughs> and were running through the city. Three days later, earthquake hit. Thousands of to- toads are running. There's all these examples of animals sensing it mm-hmm. and getting out of town. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine if downtown Nashville had hundreds of snakes going through it, we <laughs> ought to... I don't know. Figure something's going on. I mean, we should look into it. Maybe yeah. go buy some toilet paper at the store. But, you know, if I see Holly cowering in the corner one day. I say they know, you know, that super volcano in, in Yellowstone that if it, if it erupts, like the world's over, pretty much. There's a super volcano out there. And they say they're going to know if it's about to erupt if all the animals just start getting out of town yeah all the bison and everything to start running so see we that see bison he's got their suitcases as they walk down the, you know they always show a bison walking down the road yeah. he's got his roller bag with him you're like where are you guys going he goes ah we're just getting out of here you know kind of overstate her welcome you know what i mean yes. and go okay well, makes sense and he's like one of them's got his thumb out all the bisons are holding their thumbs out that's what's gonna happen that's, that's what you're saying on the podcast saying, yeah all those animals will leave man where are they going to go though? Is it going to kill everybody? Because the animals don't know. Should we follow? Well, it's gonna it's gonna create a nuclear winter. It just it's gonna erupt, block out. The, it's gonna dim the, the sun, sun. too much, dude. It's gonna, too much. It's gonna turn it down way too much, and we're gonna freeze to death. Sore is gonna have about two weeks of being like, "Told you, told you, we can dim the sun," yeah. and then it gets real bad. He goes, "All right, that was." Well, not this much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not this much. Turn it up. But he has two weeks of going. What I say? He just walks in. What I say? You say we couldn't dim the sun. I say we could dim the sun. <laughs> oh man, that's fun. Um, a raindrop's terminal velocity is eighteen miles per hour. Oh, oh, it's like a squirrel. Yeah, they can survive. Um, the air located in a lightning bolt is fifty-four thousand degrees. Oh, I don't know if I even care. You know, like that's <laughs> like such a number that's like it's five uh, times hotter than the surface of the sun i mean i'd imagine the sun's pretty hot <laughs> sun's unbelievably hot you can't get near it and you're like it's five times more you're like it doesn't even matter at this point man if i can't get to the near i need to know how much harder than an oven <laughs> that's what they should i know but they should do more sat like they they give you something that you can't wrap your head so around how many degrees hot is fifty four thousand. okay so an oven is 300? Yeah. 300, 350. All right. I go 400 sometimes just to save time. I'm impressed now. You see how I'm impressed? I'm just saying use, they use examples that mean nothing. So 135 some, times hotter than it. Oh. Some guy got hit by lightning. How hot was I it? I like what you said. I oh, think it's you pretty should, hot. You should go. I like that you described it better. I would rather hear you on the news go, all right, everybody. Your oven's at 400 degrees, <laughs> and you're like, God, that's kind of hot, right? It's hot. You want to put your hand in there? No, I don't. <laughs> now, imagine 54,000 more than that, and you're like, golly, dude, that's so hot. <laughs> and then I can wrap my head around that versus it's five times the sun, and you're like, well, how hot's the sun? Okay. 400 degrees. You remember how crazy you thought 54,000 was? A little bit less than that. Yeah. That was in the sun less than that? Uh-huh. Oh, yes, yeah, sun, yeah, sun's five times less. less than the. So you need to do this, sun. <laughs> yeah, get hit by lightning. Wait, how hot was it? <laughs> yeah, I'm not worried about temperature. Man. <laughs> I got hit with lightning. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah I wasn't did even it feel that. hot? He's like, ah, it's more. Yeah, hit by light. Like, it wasn't even that hot, dude, honestly. Yeah. It's less, be honest, you, you know yeah. those icy hot commercials? <laughs> that that name made more sense to me when I got hit by a lightning. <laughs> it was like, once I got hit by lightning, it was like, it was like a lightning, it was like a light bulb went on my head, and I go, I know what icy hot means. <laughs> Have you been to hot, Hetty B's? Yeah, like, not the hottest, would, but. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I would imagine, ice, icy hot. That's what you would say. You can uh, you can tell the temperature outside by counting the cricket's chirps. Count the number of chirps in 14 seconds and then add 40 to get the temperature. I mean, that, there's no way. There's just, that's impossible. That's just impossible. A, I don't even hear crickets all the time. So they're you got to have crickets. Huh? You got to have the crickets for it to work. But are crickets out now? They're not out in the cold. <laughs> well, it's cold. So what it's do like you do Kramer then? telling the, the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about at night? night? Well, it's a little bit harder, but I can still get within two, three hours. I mean, yeah, that's like going to, I don't know, 20 degrees, I don't know, 30. What are the crickets? Add 40. Can you, I mean, hey, we got to go. Well, now we got to start over because you just talked and I lost track of the cricket chirps. So if you want to go, maybe don't talk while I try to count these cricket chirps. I think that's amazing. That, that is amazing. I don't know how someone figured that out, but well, when you make something up, you don't have to have anybody <laughs> figure it out. I mean, that's how. <laughs> when you just some guy says that, <laughs> I don't know if that's true. You know, you can't sleep with your feet in socks because they can't breathe. That's my joke that my dad told me when uh -huh. I was a kid. I yeah. don't sleep with my socks on my feet. That's not true, at all. Mm -hmm. But that sounds like I could say that and you'd be like, "Wow, your feet can't breathe." I know. Next time you hear some crickets. You're going to count them. You're going to count them. What's that, 14, then add 40. How many times? Wait, wait. So what is it? Uh, the number of chirps in 14 seconds, and then add 40 to that number. Exactly. So you're 10, and then 40. <laughs> that sounds so made up, dude. Yeah. I believe it, but it sounds... It's, okay. <laughs> the real thing. That's a, that's a number that would be tough to get to. 10 seconds, you'd be like, I have the time for that. 14, you're like, I'm not. And you could always be a little bit off, because like, if it was 15, you'd be like, well, one place I read 15 seconds and then add 37. Well, that, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, that's the same. So, like, that would be, uh, so 14 and add 40. Yeah. So, you'd be like, or you could just do 10 and add 46. You're like, what are you doing to me? He goes, uh, or just do one second and add 61 next to it. That's what it would, that's honestly what the math ends up being. It's like it's down to someone just starts counting these chirps and he goes i don't have the time for it he goes uh, hey look i get it everybody's got a busy day listen for one cricket how many chirps one second add 60 to it and how many that chirps in one second and then the other guy goes well i'm supposed to be four you're doing do it my 14 that's like uh three minute abs and uh yeah. he goes no everybody does five minute abs man and there's doing, something about mary yeah something about mary i'm doing three minute abs not in three minute abs it's oh, better <clears throat> <laughs> Takes a snowflake 45 minutes to one hour to hit the ground. How do they know that? Dude? I don't know. You got a good little ballpark. I mean, that's 45 minutes to one hour. You got a 15 minute window. Yeah. To go. How do they time that? It could be your first set or your second set of your special. <laughs> uh, I don't know how they, I guess I got to. Now. <laughs> 45 starting... minutes to one hour. Starting now. <laughs> All right. Lost it. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> there's, a, it. there's a lot of them. I, this is brutal. I'm going to do... Let me start again. Hold on. No, don't stop. All right, I got it again. I got a bet. I got a bet. I got a bet. Uh, when Hurricane Andrew hit Florida in 1992, it was a Category 5 hurricane. It destroyed a python breeding facility and 900 pythons escaped. They have now... The pythons have destroyed the Florida Everglades. 99% um, of rabbits and foxes have basically disappeared. And uh, raccoons and, and opossums are almost all gone. I didn't think that it was. I thought I, I knew that there was the the python problem down there, but I didn't. I thought it was pets. Well, that was a I, problem too. A lot yeah. of people are just turning them loose. But that, that but this, this really was, sped it up nine hundred yeah, at once. This didn't help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That's a good. App. That should be in your argument for hurricanes. Yeah. If you want to argue hurricanes Listen, over I would have gotten to that for sure, but I was cut off a few we, times. Yeah, yeah, we didn't let you get to that. Uh, they, uh, you're about, I was on the tip of your tongue, right. a snake. And they, 
<laughs> on the flip side of that is, uh, but that that should definitely be in your argument to go. Pythons are a problem now, right? Yeah, they destroyed the did a tornado destroy the Florida Ever Everglades? <laughs> no, hurricane did. Oh, by the weather, you wish <laughs> yeah. much worse. All right, you get paid money to catch these snakes. Guys, yeah. do it. Oh, yeah? it's, I want it's like might be five hundred bucks or something. Yeah, it's a lot. A snake. I mean, the guys just go out and catch because they got to get them. They got to get them rain back. It's too much. They're destroying. They have no predator. They're just they're ev- they're yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yep. Is there how many like do, do we have any live? T- you know, I don't know. I was thinking, is there? I did a joke about tigers. But is there any tigers in the wild in America that are in the wild that mm, they would know? Not in America. Oh, that got loose somehow. Yeah, they maybe got oh. loose and then they've become. There was supposedly one in Knoxville recently, right? But I think that turned out not to be true. Like, there's got to be any, yeah, any ant, like, you know, lion or tiger. Is there anything that's not supposed to be here that's just, that's, but that's not in a zoo or didn't, but like now we just think, like, does America. No, tiger got on the loose in Knoxville. Oh, that was from a zoo. Recently, yeah. But yeah, so there's no, like, because they would have to just, you just got to tell America, hey, America. We live with a tiger now, and we don't know where it's at. <laughs> There's one somewhere in America. Somewhere in America. Yeah. But if it got loose from a zoo, what does it matter if it, where it got loose from? As long as it's if it's missing. Well, if it's in the wild, if it's missing. Yeah. And usually they find those. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, this one would probably have to get like that. That'd be a very, you know, the that have been a crazy news thing here. My craziest one I remember hearing was in Arizona. Uh, I might have talked to this. I, don't know, I talk about a lot of stuff. But they uh, was when they said, "Don't go to war as Mexico. It's a lawless place. It's a lawless town." Yeah. And I remember I was next to War as because we were. I was, it was like when I was twenty one, and then they. So I saw it on their local news, and they say tonight, everybody, don't go to War as. It's lawless right now. Oh. And I that's always stuck with me. It's the craziest thing I've ever heard on the news. Yeah. Just to be, hey man, don't go. They can murder you in the it's street. Absolute and, chaos. And, and nothing, nothing will happen to you. There's no police there. It's just wow. craziness. Wow. Yeah. Um, water spouts near dry land can make sea creatures rain down from the sky. Jeez. Fish have been known to get sucked into them and fall. Oh, wow. Um, lightning strikes the Empire State Building around 25 times a year. That'd be more than that. That's not as many as you think. <laughs> I mean, it's up there. It's asking for it. You think it'd be? You think it'd be twice a month? Yeah. Huh? It's twice a month. I know, but how much lightning is there? I mean, there's 300 earthquakes in Tennessee that I've ever felt. <laughs> I would think that the like the Empire State Building is get struck more than 25 times. That's not that many. I would think in a night. If you told me, you think you, if you heard it was 25 times a night, you would be like, oh, I believe that during a thunderstorm. Uh, I mean, I see what you're saying. That I could see it being much more than that. Yeah. Um, according to some, the amount you can predict the weather, how bad it's going to be by the the color of the woolly worm. The amount of black on the back of the woolly worm varies in proportion with the upcoming weather. Um, the longer the woolly worm's black band, keep up a woolly worm. Yeah. The longer the woolly worm's black band, the longer, colder, snowier, and more severe the weather will be. The wider the middle brown band, the less uh, bad the winter will be. It's just, I mean, there's no way that's true. You know, it's like. This isn't a scientist thing. This is farmers. So now we're listening to, I mean, that, that should be the, that should be out the gate. I would enjoy the information more if I had been told, this is my neighbor. <laughs> Who said this? My neighbor. There's, uh, that seems, I, yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> that doesn't, he goes, I was going to have. That's just what some farmers think. That's it's just, from, like. You guys heard of the Farmer's Almanac, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, they they kind of use some. I think it's fun to use some kind of fun. I'm ben not Franklin stuff's did not the, fun. Ben Franklin it's did fun. the first one, right? That's uh, poor Richard, right? Well, still an almanac. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I don't even know what y'all both were talking about right there <laughs> at all. Have you ever heard of Ben Franklin? Richards, I thought it was a bar. Isn't that a bar in something? <laughs> that's the, <laughs> bar, the that's office. That's the bar yeah, in the yeah, office. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've truly segued. <laughs> um, a mirage. Guess what a mirage is? Yep. It's a Vegas. <laughs> Stay there twice. 
the optical illusion. Uh, not a hallucination. See, that's the part you guys don't remember. This. <laughs> yep. Okay. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <what's> <laughs> that's all. <laughs> that's what this podcast is. What do they do? They just ask them if they know something and they say yes or no. Yep. Yep. And they go, so they say yes, they move on. They go, oh, that's crazy. So no, they explain it. It goes, no, no, they still move on. They just get a yes or no. Get a yes or no from them. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I always thought a mirage from cartoons was like, you see water in the desert and you run and jump. But that's a hallucination. That's not, you can take pictures of mirages. Mirages are real things. Um, it's atmospheric what? conditions that cause them, but. They're not just like in your head. Oh, it's like the you're you're so far away from something. The shape of it looks. And like we've seen thing. that. You've got seen that on hot roads, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So that's yeah, yeah. A sun dog. You guys know what a sun dog is? I talked about sun dog because yes. they just saw a UFO. <laughs> yes. No. Oh, what? You, you don't know what sun dog is. No. Uh, <laughs> no. What's the matter with you, Aaron? Sorry, you know dude. That was so dude. funny when he was like, "Y'all know the mirages." Yeah. He just go, "Yup." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep. Next. <laughs> oh, man, we're really cooking now. <laughs> we got a lot of questions to get through. We're really rolling. <laughs> we got hung up on woolly worms too long, man. We got to the, we gotta get to the back end of this. I mean, we got oh, chirping. Wow. You, you count how many times a woolly worm farts and add 50. And that's, and you can tell, you can tell how, what your house feels like when you go inside of it. <laughs> What is the sun dog? I'm looking at it, but I don't know. Uh, the only thing I brought up sun dog is I follow some UFO thing on uh, Instagram, <laughs> and there's this there's a sun dog, and then they said uh, they thought a UFO came out of the sun dog, and then I never even heard they weren't even talking about the sun dog. The sun dog wasn't even. They talked about it as if <laughs> like, everybody knows what it is. So this sun dog, obviously, <laughs> yeah. and then this UFO comes out of, and then no one brought. I was like, well, what's a sun dog, man? Like, let's back should, up a little bit. Yeah. That's just, and it was square. It's, yeah, it makes around the, the sun. It's not as, you know, UFO spotted during sun, oh, sunset. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. We're about to be. Yeah. This is where we, or do we have, is that all the weather stuff? Weather, there's probably I mean, a ton more. Yeah, there's a ton more here. Is there any other fun that's like something crazy? Um, something you here. thought like it'd be. Well, I thought a lot I thought would be impressive, but. I got one, maybe. All right, let's hear it. Oh. The loudest noise ever in the world. <laughs> Krakatoa. When Krakatoa erupted. Oh, the meteorite? In the 1880s. Oh, never mind. Yeah. The volcano. Yeah. When it erupted. Yes. The la- Everybody knows the Krakatoa. <laughs> All right. Bye, no, folks. I don't know the Krakatoa. I'm just yeah, it was a big volcano. Yeah. It erupted. It was so loud. It's the loudest noise ever. It circled the earth like three and a half times. Yeah. So loud. People 50, Everybody heard it. People 50 miles away, their eardrums were ruptured. It was heard all over the world. All over the world. Yeah. Three times around. The sound traveled three times around. It was so, so loud. So we would have heard it here. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, so it was in Indonesia. <laughs> it was registered by, like, uh, you know, the, the devices. So the sound <laughs> heard around the world. The Richter scale. Don't think I'm crazy by going so I would hear it. Yeah. Like, no, well, no, no, no. I know you're. I know you're not crazy. It's like technically not. Maybe the first time around you heard it. I don't know about yeah. the second or the third time around. Yeah, but even to hear it at all <laughs> is pretty crazy. But where did it happen? Indonesia. 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 Conveniently in 1880, when the, all the continents were together. In 1880. <laughs> yeah. And then they spread out. San Francisco yeah. was more they by New out. York. <laughs> yeah, San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm listening. Go ahead. It's been a busy hundred or so years. Yeah. yeah. Seattle was more of a Russia thing. Go ahead. That's about it. I was pumped to talk about that, but I think that's that's I pretty cool. Lost, uh, no, I mean that's pretty insane. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. loud. Yeah, and it's just when it exploded, mm-hmm. and then everybody. I don't know why. I feel like I should have heard about this before. Well, it was a long time ago. I know, but it's a. I can't imagine anything that the whole world could hear. You think anybody was sitting home like, what was that? Or they just kept Yeah, going. that's what I mean. Is it like right. it just registered the sound? Or am I watching TV and I just hear, Boo, and you're like, what was that? Did you hear something? Yeah, did you hear something? You moved the TV? Oh, that was Krakakatua in Indonesia. <laughs> and then everybody just went back about their day. They didn't go, well, that's crazy. 
So this this is this is pretty crazy the way they have this worded this article about it. It says the Krakatoa explosion registered 172 decibels at 100 miles from the source. This is so astonishingly loud that it's inching up against the limits of what we mean by sound. Tell me what a rock concert decibel is. Yeah, do y'all know y'all know about decibels? Oven. <laughs> if I That's like it. a loud rock concert. Is like. Oh right, 120. So, so 172 is insane, right? Yeah, churches were up to roughly 90. What if you slam an oven door? That's yeah. at 400 yeah, let's temperature. Do, let's do. How loud would that be? How hot was that volcano? That's how what hot, I want to yeah. know. Well, that's 172, and a Kiss concert's 120. That's Kiss, pretty, but so, that's 100 miles away from. It. Okay, yeah. I was supposed to say Kiss probably goes around the world. So if you were near it, <laughs> if you were near it, you could. It would just almost kill you. Yeah, would the sound just kill you? Would it like just shatter your well, super close? You would just die from the the volcano itself. Oh, the you would be like, oh, did the sound do it? You're like, no, it was actually the lava. <laughs> it was actually, like, yeah. it was ash. You know, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if he even heard the sound because he died so quickly from the lava. <laughs> the lava was so hot. But he had his he hands over his ears, upset that he didn't get to hear the sound. Right. I know him, and he would have been the guy that's going. I didn't get to hear the sound. You're like, should have been that close. Uh, he died real quick. Should we? What's that volcano that might explode? Or the, the super volcano yeah. in the Yellowstone. Should we just live on it? <laughs> because that means like you just go when it happens. When it explodes, you're like, oh. it's over. Instead of moving, just get right. It's on like, what are you going to die a year after it happens? Slowly, or just get get up in it, and then just when it happens, you're you don't even know. The last volcano in the U.S. that erupted was Mount St. Helens in 1980. Yeah, 57 people were killed. Did y'all cover that at Channel 5, or was that more of a... (laughs) Uh, I'm sure we we did. (laughs) Uh, Do you want to talk about Yellowstone, or... I don't don't have a lot to say, but it's just it's real scary, and it's going to happen at some point. Yeah. If you don't donate to Wikipedia. (laughs) That's right. Hello, here at Wikipedia. We're the only things keeping Yellowstone crack attack from cracking again. Do they call it Crack Attack after it cracked the loudest? Is that what the name? Krakatoa. <laughs> well, Krakatoa. Crack it's where Sorge is from. Crack Attack would be a what better. Crack Attack. Yeah, it was Attack of Kraken. <laughs> Krakatoa. You know, when did they call it? Did they call that after it? It made a loud no, cracking sound? Would've... What are the odds? <laughs> the loudest sound ever from something is called Crack Attack. Krakatoa. Well, that's the name of the island. I think. How would they uh, know how loud it was? Like in decibels. Well, when you're a hundred years ago and no one can look anything up. 140 years ago. Well, I think they, they still had they still had like seismic seismographs. Just on the back, go there. Back then in the 1880s, I think. Okay. I don't know if they had cars. <laughs> you're right, they did. No. <laughs> but they had that. <laughs> Yeah, I, guess. I don't think I mean, lights could be dimmed, but yeah. they had, but they can track yeah. noise from Indonesia. <laughs> they were still going, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, man. I think we did it. Okay. Right, weather. We might be back at a weather one. Again. Yeah, this, fun. We won't do a part two, but we might. <laughs> we're going to throw weather. Weather's pretty fun. Yeah. A lot of fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right, everybody, if you listen to this, thank you so much. As always, we love you guys very much. Leave your comments, uh, everything. <laughs> Nate Land at NateBargetzi.com, right? Instagram, Twitter, yep. YouTube. Yep. Keep rating us. That rating us is huge. And all those five star ratings we got will be like a, like a, you know, like you go somewhere, you got to give us five stars. If you're not, don't do it. Uh, but do whatever. We love <laughs> you very much. Bye. Bye.